This is a review problem for part one of Bach, Velman, and DeVos stats. It's uh, about measuring engines, specifically uh, the displacement, which is the internal size, uh, total size of the cylinders, in cubic inches. And it's uh, engines of new cars. And we're just going to go through some, some problems to make sure we understand what these summary stats can do for us and what questions we might want to ask. Uh, the when, where, how, and why, they don't make clear, and it's probably not super important for this particular problem. Okay, first question they ask is just how many cars were measured. Well, that just means uh, you just need to realize what this word count means. Well, count equals 38, so 38 cars were measured. The significance of that, of course, is that if this is 2, then we're not really talking statistics here. We're not talking about a good sample. Um, and if this is 30 or 300 or 3,000, it's going to affect how we might think about these statistics. Okay, so it's always something important to, to do at the start. Um, we don't need so much space here. Why might the mean be so much larger than the median? Okay, so they're already asking us, asking us a why question here. And we look at it and say, yeah, actually, the mean is rather larger than the median. Okay, so that's definitely an indication of something. The most important indicator is that uh, the distribution can't be symmetric, can't be really close to being symmetric, and have the mean and the median be very different. Okay, is ace is not symmetric. Uh -huh. Okay, now there might be uh, various reasons for that. It might be skewed with a tail on the, well, let's see, the tail would probably be on the right because that tends to be, elevate the mean and not the median. Or there might be outliers. Outliers are something that often influence the mean. Uh, they influence the mean strongly and not the median so much. Okay, and we'll have to think about that some more. In fact, they ask us about that in a, in a little bit. Okay, so describe center and spread with appropriate measures, the way they say it in the book. I'm taking the, I'm paraphrasing some of the, the book's description here. So the center, we could use the mean or the median. But since we already know it's not symmetric distribution, that mean is probably not really it could be reflecting the center better than the median, but it, but given only this information, we'd probably go with the median, since it's less sensitive to um, to getting messed around for a non-symmetric distribution. And so that's going to be 148.5 uh, cubic inches. All of these things, except for the count, have units of cubic inches. Okay, and then spread. Well, if we've gone with a median, then it'd be kind of weird to go with the standard deviation because mean and standard deviation tend to go with, with each other and tend to be more useful for um, symmetric distributions and especially something that's close to normal. Um, when you've already ch chosen the median, that sort of ranking things and looking at the order uh, probably makes sense to talk about the IQR better than, uh, better than the standard deviation. Well, they don't give us the IQR, but we can definitely calculate that. The IQR is the third quartile minus the first quartile. Well, they don't have anything labeled quartile, but they, that's what these are. This is the third quartile, 75th percentile, three quarters of the way through the list, and this is one quarter of the way through the list. So that's going to be 231 minus 105 is 126. Again, cubic inches. Report everything with the appropriate units. Okay. Um, and of course, somebody else could say, "Well, no, I really want to report the mean, the standard deviation." But they'd probably have to, they'd probably have to say something more about this distribution, or have some secret information to, to say why that would be really better. Okay, um, you could definitely report all four as long as it's clear <coughs> what the what your the status of everything is. Okay, is a 227 cubic inch engine cubic inch engine unusually large? So it says it actually says in the problem, your neighbor is bragging about their 227 cubic inch engine. Well, that's where we can look at these stats, and we can notice. Hey, that's really close to the 75th percentile. Okay, so 227 is less than 231, which is Q3 or the 75th percentile. So <coughs> um, more than a quarter, more than one quarter of engines in the sample are larger. So I'd say it's large, but not bragworthy large, not unusually large. So 227 cubic inches is large but not unusually so. So that's a good use of these percentile or in other words quartile information. Okay, are there any outliers? 
is the question that we already were kind of thinking to ask ourselves, and then the book comes around and asks us. Well, there, we're, here we're going to have to do some calculation. Okay, Remember, our, our criteria for outliers is we build the fences, and then we, um, we ask if anything is above the upper fence and below the lower fence. So let me do the calculations real quick, and then I'll say it the summary in a complete sentence. So the upper fence, not hands, for fence, is um, Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. That's the seat of the pants empirical rule that people figured out. And it's not set in stone, but it's a good rule for what you consider an outlier. OK, so Q3 was 231. Oops, kind of moving around a lot, sorry. 231 plus 1.5 times, we calculated the IQR, 126. And so that's 420. So how do we know if there's any, we want to know if there's anything above that fence, OK? Well, they don't give us the min and the max. It would have been nice if they did. But they do give us the range. That's the difference between the min and the max. OK, so let's see. The range, uh, let's put that in math mode, I guess. Range is 275. That's the max minus the min. We don't know the min, but we can say something about it. We know the min is definitely less than Q1. The, way, the only place the min could be is somewhere between 0 and 105. And we don't know exactly where. But since it's less than 105, that tells us the max, we just rearrange things here, the max is the min plus 275. And so that's definitely less than 105 plus 275. And that would be 380. So this is a generous overestimate for what the max can be, because that's kind of equating the min and the, and the Q1, which they're definitely not equal. The min is definitely less. And so the, the max is somewhere in the 300s. And so that's, there's nothing in the sample that is above that upper fence. Okay? So no, there's no high outliers. Okay? What about the lower fence? It's very symmetrical. We start at Q1, and we subtract 1.5 times the IQR. Okay, and Q1 was 105. And you can probably see where this is going. What kind of number is that going to be? It's going to be negative. OK. So that's negative, so definitely no low outliers. This is not the kind of quantity, this, the, the displacement or the size in cubic inches of an engine. It's not, it's not something that could ever be negative. OK. Um, so there's no outliers. All right. So we can just summarize that by saying there are no data points above or outside the two fences, hence there are no outliers. So that answers a question we had before. Why is the mean different from the median? Well, there really aren't outliers. And so it must be the bulk of the distribution that's skewed, not just a few things that are making that mean so big. It's really the bulk of the distribution. So we would predict that it's skewed with um, maybe a tail going off to the right. Okay. Two more questions. Should 68% of engines be between 88 and 266 cubic inches? And in the book version of the problem, they give us a little hint as to what these numbers are. But this should be a very, very big hint. Why would somebody guess this magic number 68%? Well, that's the, the, the rule for normal distribution. So if the normal model applied here with reasonable or reasonably accurately, let's say, OK, then we could use the 68% rule to say what? What does that rule say? It says 68% would be between the mean minus 1 standard deviation and the mean plus 1 standard deviation. And if you look at the numbers, 177 minus about 89 and 177 plus 89, that's where they get the 88 and the 266. Okay, But we know this can't be normal. Think about it for a second. To be normal, you definitely have to be symmetric and unimodal. Um, it's not even symmetric. OK. Uh, I In another video, I talk about how even if it is symmetric and unimodal, um, just even if like this mean and the median were very close to each other, we would have very little justification for applying a normal model here. It's a bunch of engines. Why would we know that those are normally distributed?
Okay. Um, the book is less careful about that. It says, oh, let's use a normal model if it's unimodal and symmetric. Well, not a great idea. But here it's clear that it's not symmetric. The mean and the median are very different. And so do not apply any kind of reasoning that applies only to normal models here. Okay. It's great to know this rule, the 68% rule, where normal models apply. Not here. Okay, what if you converted cubic inches to cubic centimeters by multiplying by 16.4? How does this affect the summary stats? This is an interesting thing because they're not giving us the data points. They're not giving us the 38 numbers for the engines. Those were calculated in cubic inches, and the summary stats are, are shown here all in cubic inches. What if somebody said, wait, I want metric, I want cubic centimeters. If without access to the original data, can we actually figure out what happens to all these numbers in cubic centimeters? Absolutely. All of these kinds of stats are going to change in exactly the same way. They're all in cubic inches, and so they're all going to, um, all the summary stats, except, of course, the count, which isn't going to change, will also multiply by 16.4 because they're cubic inches getting converted to cubic centimeters. Okay, So when you rescale, the moral is that rescaling, as we know from the book, rescaling data also rescales the summary stats. Okay. Um, and that's an important thing so that we don't have to say, well, I, I can't figure it out. I don't know what happens because I don't have access to the raw data. Oh, yeah. No, we, even without the raw data, we know we just multiply by that same factor to convert. Okay.